Hello everyone, Sean here, aka Cleaver Slips, and here we are for round six of the FIA Gran Turismo Championship. Apologies for the delay in the video, I know it's been well over a week and I can tell that you're probably asking me, round six? What happened to round five or at round four? Well, if you're watching this right now, we're urgently buying the car, the one make car for this championship, and it really bugs me that you can't just buy the car on the one make race directly from the race menu because as we finally found this car and admittedly I left it late the clock ticks over to 2121 and the race is gone and we're already at round six so essentially I didn't own the car I missed round five did I miss much probably not but here we are at round six Brands Hatch, lovely circuit Brands Hatch, as a British person you know I, I, I'm probably obliged to say that but um, let's take you on a little lap of Brands Hatch then as we're doing our, our warm up, firstly we're coming up over that massive crest, absolutely ridiculous crest of the hill, uh, which is known as the Paddock Hill Bell and Hollywood Hill. We've just gone through the Druids. Almost hairpin, not quite hairpin, but you got a, you can take this quite well and you can actually be, and as you can tell, we're back in the Aston Martin in the Group 4 category for this one. You can actually be quite aggressive on your lines. This is Surtees. I, I really cannot get the grip of Surtees. I've, I've never been able to. It's been the one corner on this circuit that's always got me. Always just got me. Anyway, down Pilgrims, all the way down to Hawthorne Bend. You can take that, again, quite aggressively on this game. Um, you just need to scrub a little bit of, of, of speed. You have to drop a gear down, try and get as much as the curb as you can into Westfield Bend right there, because you want to get on the power as quickly as you can. Get up that hill uh, around what is still, I believe, called Dingledale Corner, uh, before we get to Sterling's Bend uh, here. Again, you can break later than the board there and just smash it all the way down this black uh, back straight down towards Clearways and the Clark Curve, and then onto the Brabham Strait and win. And if you're wondering why it's named after so many people, obviously these are great British drivers here. Uh, you're going to have to, excuse me, I have a cup of tea in a uh, Castrol GTX oily mug lookalike thing, which is pretty cool. Anyway, there we go, 1.31, that was our time uh, for this um, warm-up session. Little bit confident I could probably get somewhere there. Um, desperately wanted to get out on track, as you could tell. Really desperate to get out on track. Eventually, we do. Did not change any of the tyres. One of the cars that is the go to car this race has just popped in in front of us. It's the Renault Megane. If you remember back in the days when Gran Turismo Sport first started, this Renault Megane was incredibly overpowered. Massively so. But Nowadays it's been nerfed a little bit more, but still not quite. And again, it's a very fast accelerating car that can keep a lot of downforce and grip through the corners, unlike my big chonky Aston. But you know, you can do whatever you want. Here we are. Final lap of qualifying. We managed to get, because there's so much traffic on the course, everything else at 137, which is good enough to get us into fifth place on this run. But as you can see, the McGann is very much the pick. So here we are in the race, rolling start, thankfully, something nice, so I don't have to worry about the traction control. First lap, in we go, lots of chaos ensues. No, negatory, we are actually having some decent racing in this race, believe it or not. Here we go, braking right there for Druids, just after the board, but just before the shadow that you get on the um, bridge. Very difficult to find if the sun is down, as has been in the daily race at the moment. A little bit concerned, making sure, you know, we try to make sure we're not going to connect with anybody, because we don't want to ruin anybody's race. And as you can see, there's a lot of people unsure really how to take the bend there at Surtees. But, you know, this has been a clean start so far, which is which is a, a nice thing. And we can tell early on where our lines and where our braking distances are going to get a speed in here. We are incredibly strong through this section. 
you could say we're quite confident compared to other people who are already bunching. Here we are, we've got the Portuguese guy right in front of us. Do we go around the outside? I thought better of it. Try and get out as wide as you can, hit the curb as well as you can, and then get through. Don't want to touch that grass on the left-hand side because that will send you regardless, even if you tap it at that speed, that will send you. You're gonna to have to lift off massively to try and recover it if you even can. Down at a clear race, try and keep as left as possible and then throw it into that right without spinning it out because you want to keep a lot of that speed as you get in there. And that's one of the things that we do really well here. As you can see, we've got the run coming down over the hill. Round Paddock Hill, yeah. Not really a little bit of a tap, but you know we get there. But we've compromised a lot of our speed having to try and defend that. We've lost the inside line going into Druid and we let the guy through. He has a little bit of a tap because... The guy in front of him still not going that far, still struggling with it. And, you know, it's getting a little bit bitty, but we're still racing right up front. The guy's on there. Guy on the right, massively off track then. And no penalty. I decided to take the line off track, but he covered into the middle. Bit naughty, but, you know, whatever. It's not the naughtiest thing we'll see in this in this race, certainly from this guy. Spoiler, he wins. <laughs> Sorry, I do not win this race. If you're coming here to look at people winning then you're certainly on the wrong channel because winning is not our game here. Our game is survival and pressuring people into making stupid mistakes around super fast corners, exactly as you can see right now. And it's something that's happening quite a lot. Again, we've got the run here. We're going to have to try and send it up the inside. And we get tapped because we're compromised. Is there a penalty? Is there heck? But we're down to fifth. The guy that was in the lead is down to fourth. That was his own fault. He went right. And fair play to him for not smashing it out on the side of the course. And there we go. Trying to keep there as, as much as we can. So here we are. First, second, third, fourth and fifth. It's split a lot better now. A lot cleaner as we come into the end of the second lap. So we're going to skip ahead now. Um, from lap two to lap three. A little bit later on he just loses it a bit he's trying to push too hard and we get up into fourth as if nothing happened so end of this lap right in front of us you can see there's our portuguese friend and um somebody else an italian is in the dust what happened there i wonder well we'll see we'll see in the replay later is it dirty who knows end of lap four we're into third the Portuguese guy and now a Spanish guy right up the front. They're, they're having a little bit of a Barney. They're having a little bit of a set too. We're coming around Paddock Hill Bend. And there is the Portuguese guy. He's lost it on the corner. We get him into second place. And we've barely done a thing wrong. The only thing is, is that we know we've got the pace to catch this guy up front. Because we were catching him earlier. So here we go. Coming into a bend. And what do I do? I do not take my own advice. I push too hard, I hit the grass, and then the car does that thing where it doesn't want to turn around at all. Down to fourth. Down to fifth. Yet again, my own mistakes costing me at the time what is a potential podium. This guy gets a little bit squiggly a lap later and we've definitely got the pace on the AMG Mercedes as we come into here. We try to send one up the outside, is this risky? Yes it is. We overcommit, he gets us back on the cutback of course, but we definitely got the measure of this guy, this uh, I believe Austrian guy looking at the flag. Um, and yeah, here we are, the fight yet again. Where is the breaking point in that corner? Nobody knows, it seems. And that's the theme of what is going to be this race. And sneak preview. I'm recording. I've already recorded the next round. So you're going to see both of them together. It's just being a delay in my editing. He bails into the pit. Whether that's planned or not, I don't know. Or whether he just went nuts to it. Well, lap 6 or 17, there is going to be a pit for us here. And there is a strategy. And the strategy is pit when you should pit. <laughs> to be perfectly honest. I've got the measure of this track that I think I can get away with not being too bad on the tyres despite their wear and that the fuel is going to, I say last me relatively well, it's going to do certainly enough. Anyway, here we are, a couple of laps later, lap 9 out of 17, we are up into third after overtaking somebody who had stopped in the pits. Recovery en route, you might say, but the fuel 
The fuel has gone. Pit in. Box, box, box. Save fuel. Trying to tackle this without losing too much speed. Little tap and we're in. Time to change the tyres. We managed to get nine laps out of the medium tyre. So we changed to the soft because there's only going to be another eight laps maximum. Probably seven at this rate. But we got to sit in the box for a while to get all that go-go juice. Glug, 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 glug. I overcompensate and I just go for it. Sure, it cost me another couple of seconds, but did it really cost me that much? Who knows? Right in front of us, we have another Renault Megane. Not our Portuguese friend, but a new German friend. Hello, German friend. How are you? And again, as you can see, for some strange reason, we seem to have the measure of everybody through this middle section. Whether they just can't get there, there we give them a little love tap. Accidental, but when you've got nowhere to go, you've got nowhere to go. I am expecting him to make a bit of a mistake there. He doesn't, but I backed out anyway, just in case I could take advantage. Everybody's breaking point in that corner. He's way out. Nobody knows where they are. But anyway, anyway end of lap 11. We're coming up into clearways. We can, and we can just keep the speed through there. Everybody else is just, for want of a better word, squirrely. So there we go. Coming into the paddock hill bend, we've got the move done. We can break in time. Clean overtake, lovely. I felt like Mansell in the 80s. So there we go. There's fifth place back again, but we got fourth place and our Austrian friend once again ahead of us. A guy that, as you can tell, we've we got the pace on these guys. It is incredibly frustrating that it is only my own stupidity and mistakes that seem to be costing us positions in tracks that I can actually do. He burns it too much wide on Surtees. A mistake I've made far too many times, and you'll get nothing but respect from me. Into fourth we go. Hurrah! Lap 12 out of 17. Fuel's looking good. Tires aren't looking too bad. Two laps later. <laughs> the crash and the burn. Down back into fifth we go, but it is our German friend in the McGann that gets us. So he's obviously got the measure on our on our previous Austrian friend, who I believe is now down in seventh place. And the breaking points all of a sudden. The tires they've gone a little bit cold once we've gone off onto the grass. We need to get them up to temperature. We can't sling it like we were. And as you can tell, that front left tire uh, it did on previously. It took a massive beating, and it did again. We didn't have enough to catch up. But we finished where we started, and that is more than can be said for a lot of people and a lot of races that you've probably already seen on this channel. A healthy fifth place for the Aston Martin R Motorsport. Lovely livery there in the Group 4 at Brands Hats. But let's go and take a little look, shall we, at the replays and see what happened. Was there some punting? Was there some people taking some bad advantages. Well, I'm going to have a look, certainly at the start here as well, because, you know, this is actually quite a nice race, I will admit. A little bit deep into Paddock Hill Bend, but I was trying to get out of the way of the guy there. I'm trying to work out what that car is off the top of my head. I it's a Lambo, isn't it? Yeah. Um, but there's a lot of nice, good close racing, and you can tell... We we have already built a gap on this top five. A lot of people running wide in the corner then. Uh, that would be Graham Hillbend. And it's it's actually a very nice quick corner if you can hook it up right. But this first lap is lovely. And Brands has is just a lovely circuit. Yes, it's tight, but it's fast. And if you can get stuff hooked up right, you can get a delicious lap down here. And if you are, are in Gran Turismo Sport, and especially if you have PSVR, I highly recommend going into the game in the PSVR mode in the F1500, the 80 style turbo Formula 1 car. Here we go, looking to the outside. It's never going to happen, really. But we, we capitulate, and that is good. Um, yeah, I highly recommend giving that a go round here in VR. It is a lot of fun. Sure, it's not as breakneck speed as that ridiculous Red Bull thing, but you know you got to love a little bit of delicious turbo wine. And it is delicious. 
and you can feel where the power boost comes. When you accelerate out of here, you're hitting around about here in that car, and you go, whoa, my god! It's crazy. There we go, sending it up the inside, panic kill bend. Little tap. I was there, he knew I was there, but he managed to get me back on the switch back from that. And as you say, this guy goes to win the race. Is he a bit dirty? We do not know. Maybe he is. And to be perfectly honest, we've all been a little bit dirty accidentally or whatever. But as we saw previously, was there some punting? However, there, that was very much a penalty incident. Massive off track. And no, no penance for that very much non-line. But hey ho, what can you do? Um, I believe the penalty system was turned on and fixed in this game at this point because I have had penalties in other races, so who knows? But yeah, what a great first two laps of racing this was. Very little position change, but it was all calm. Everybody had a good time. There's another off track there, which is absolutely crazy for the guy. And that is where we get the punt. The French guy there just went off of his own accord, but we got the punt, and again, two penalty instants on that lap. Was he responsible here? No. I thought he was, unless he net coded. but that guy that crashed and burned, not the fault by the looks of it. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. It's um, Cleaver Slips if you want to find me on all of the social medias. That's Instagram, Twitter, all the lot. And remember to like and subscribe to this video if you want to see more of these kind of things on the channel. It is quite a lot of fun. Lovely 911 GT3 there from 2003. What can you do with that, really? What can you do? Anyway, thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed this video. And we shall see you in the next one where we will be tackling an awful circuit with an awful car that I love. <laughs>